Hello, in this video I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the Contoso monetization code sample, which demonstrates how to interact with the App Source Fulfillment APIs and build your own web app and set of APIs that you can use to secure and license Office add-ins. So to get started here, uh, what I'm going to do is just walk through this from end to end and what I'm what I'm demonstrating here is also documented inside of uh, the documentation that accompanies this sample. If you look in the main README, you'll find a link to re, uh, the test documentation where you can walk through these steps. So here we go. All right, so a user has come to AppSource, as you can see here, and this is our mock AppSource test site. We had to make a mock app source test site to fully test all the APIs and use cases. And you can learn more about that in the appendix at the bottom of the readme that comes with this sample and what we were and were not able to test without creating this mock app source website and APIs. So here we are on the mock app source website and we can see that there is a featured app for sale called Contoso apps and it includes an Outlook and a SharePoint add-in. And in this video, I'm gonna use the Outlook add-in to demonstrate this licensing capabilities. The SharePoint add-in is exactly the same um, capabilities as the Outlook add-in. So a user comes to the site and they say they're interested in this add-in, so they click Purchase. And now that they purchase, they select which type of license they would like. And so I'm going to start off with a site-based plan this would be basically I'm purchasing a license that works for everybody in my organization. So I click purchase and upon purchase, this is to demonstrate that you can capture metadata here uh, within the website that you create to manage the licenses that you're selling through AppSource. Notice at the top, the URL has changed. We're no longer on that AppSource demo site and so is our branding. We're in now in our web app. And so this is our web app sample site. And what you can think of this is as your site as an ISV. This site belongs to you and you're gonna do things inside of this site to light up and implement manage licensing capabilities. So this example here shows just, hey, pick which location you're in. This metadata could be used for anything or extended is the idea here, but just show you at this point, now we're going to click provision. When we click provision, what we actually did is made a connection between the license that was purchased in AppSource and our own record here, so we can now hand these licenses out. And so now you can see that I have a site-based license, and this is again on the ISV site, and if I click Purchase Cancel License, it, it just is another page on the ISV site. It says, you purchase a site license, all users within your organization can access this service through. And so if you want to change this to a different license type, you'd need to click Go to App Source to change the plan. And this actually takes you to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Um, again, this is being done and served up through that App Source web app sample uh, that we created, the same one that we started with in AppSource, uh, but in real life you'd be on the Microsoft 365 admin site. And so here I'd be able to switch between the license types or cancel my subscription outright. Before we do that though, I want to walk you through the licensing capabilities associated with the site-based plan. So let's do that now. So now that we have purchased ourselves a license for this site-based plan, if we go back, to, again, this is the ISV site, and I can go sign in to the ISV site here. Um, because it's a site-wide plan, there's really no configuration that needs to occur. You either have this or you don't. And so I'm going to go now open up the Office add-in right here by going to create a new email and then coming down at the bottom, pick this ellipsis and then open the Office add-in. And so this comes with the sample as well. And the Office add-in's job here is to demonstrate how do you call into these APIs now that you've been licensed from an add-in to check your licensing state. And so here I'm going to log in 
with that user and it says you do have a paid license and that's because I have this site-wide license. So any user in my tenant right now, including this user, you can see as tenant admin, it's admin account instead of Todd B. I can open it up here as well, sign in with the admin account and I can see this user. Yes, you do have a paid license because this is a site-wide license. Every one of my company gets the license when I buy it. So let's go back here now and let's change that license type. So we come to purchase or cancel license on the ISV site. It says, hey, you got to go somewhere else to do that. We get into M365 admin and we say, you know what? I want a seat based license instead of a site based license. I'm going to just buy one. One of those licenses, please update my subscription. And so that subscription has been updated now. So if I come back here now and I load this add in again, and this was the user I purchased the add in with, I come back, I log in, I don't have a paid license. And the other user won't have one either because although I've purchased the license, I haven't assigned that license. So now I'm going to go assign that license. So to do that, I head back to the ISV page, log in, come to the home page. And the first thing I do is I pick manage users. This here is my ability to control which users have the capability to actually manage other users here. And so here I can come in and say that account Todd B. that count in I say I'm also giving it the permission to manage licenses so if someone logs in with this account they get the permission to manage other people's licenses if this is not checked then they can just log in and the licenses will be assigned to, or the license is assigned to them so here's the Todd B account this is the Todd B account again so now as we load the add-in and authenticate ourselves again you will notice that I still don't have a paid license because this is just who can manage the licenses. In order to actually hand the license out, I have to come here. And now I can get to this page because I gave this user account, Todd B, the ability to manage licenses. And notice first comes first served as disabled. I've purchased one license. I have one available to hand out. And right now I'm not allowing over assignment. If I want to buy more licenses directly from AppSource, I can put it in here and click purchase. I can also directly add a user here. And if, if I added Todd B account right now via this dialog, what we would see happen is, is when I came back here and refreshed this, it would say you do have a paid license. I want to show you another way you can give that user that license without having to explicitly type their account name in. You can turn on this first come first serve. And so this was off before, and when I refreshed, it said I don't have a paid license. Well, I just turned that on for that license now. And so now, when I log in with the user, since I've turned on first come, first serve, it says you do have a paid license. And if I turn on the developer tools here now, I can take a closer look in the console and I can see these debug statements. You have one license is available on your tenant. Your tenant has purchased licenses, but the user did not initially have one, but they just had an available license auto assigned to them because auto license assignment was enabled. So, and overrun, which I haven't shown you yet, was disabled. So all these debugging messages will be here every time to help you understand why it's telling you you do or do not have a paid license. That can make it very easy for you to debug for your customers even to figure out, do they need to turn on overrun? Do they need to turn on auto assignment? Do you need to actually buy more licenses? Whatever the case may be. So now as I come down to my other user here, it, remember last time it said we do have a paid license. I took that license away. And I have auto assignment turned on. And I don't have any licenses available, though, because I gave out my only license so far. So what's going to happen? Well, I come in here and I log in and I connect and you can see that it didn't work correctly. 
because exactly as I expected, this user was not granted a license, so we didn't see any information about that. So if we come back over, we head back to our license management page and we turn on allow over assignment, even though I haven't purchased enough licenses, I'm actually gonna grant this user access. So I've turned that on and watch this. I'm gonna refresh the page too. And I want you to keep an eye on this section down here user emails and active this month, check it out. We're actually tracking when people log in and if they've logged in in the last month, that's in the database here. So every time a user uses your add in and authenticates and the check is done for the licensing, the information is updated to say, have they used it or not? This is a good way to go through and if someone hasn't used it this month, you could just hit remove and assign the license to someone who needs it. So now that over assignments turned on, I'm going to come back. I am going to go to that admin account who doesn't have a license yet, is not successfully able to use it. Again, authenticate to the add-in. And what we're going to see here is we do have a paid license. If we open up the developer part, we can see we have zero licenses available on the tenant. We purchase license, but they're all been assigned, but allow over assignments enabled. So we can see overrun was enabled, allow auto license assignment was enabled. And that's why this user got a license right on the fly on demand as they needed it. Now that's up to you then as an ISV or a user of the ISV to come back in here and say, oh, assign license quantity is two, but I've only purchased one. Do I need to get rid of one of these here? Or do I need to come back in and add a license by clicking it like that and actually going and purchasing it from the app source itself. And so now you can see two and two. You can use these in different combinations. They work exactly as I advertised and well not advertised, demonstrated here. So that's the pieces of the puzzle. The other thing that you will find in this sample is also a SharePoint framework web part it looks exactly like the add-in you see right here, and it contains the same exact debugging information that you saw back here as well. So whether you're putting that web part into SharePoint or you're using your add-in from Outlook here, uh, this video should definitely help get you ramped up on the sample. We've updated the sample to include Word, Excel, and PowerPoint add-ins as well. Here you can see on this page that the admin account that I'm currently logged into this browser session with does have a license to the suite of add-ins. If I go over to the Word document now and I run the add-in, I'll log in and at this point it will do the licensing check and it will determine that I do have a paid license. The experience is pretty much identical over in Excel as well as as well as PowerPoint, as you can see as I log into each and see I do have a paid license here. Finally, I'll do it in the PowerPoint here, and we can see all three add-ins across the board indicate I have a paid license. So next thing to do is to head back to the license management page, turn off first come first save, and remove the license for the user I'm testing. Now I'm going to head back and close the add-ins and open them back up. This will demonstrate how the licensing capability is being checked and we can see that this user does not have a license now. The same thing will happen as we go back into Excel and PowerPoint as well. And that's exactly what we want to see. We don't have a paid license because we shouldn't. We just removed it in our license management page. Finally, we'll go through PowerPoint here and see, indeed, we don't have that paid license. So everything just as we expect. It's also important to note that if you pull up the debugging console, you can also see written to the console the same messages that we saw uh, that I dove deep into with the Outlook add-in. 